I'm like, time for the meat and potatoes. Give me a price tag. $12 million. Woo! The last name ain't Trump, is it? You want to watch like that? <laughs> yeah. Damn right you do. Everybody want to watch like that. How we get it? I go practice. Let's go get it. Andre Royale. That's right. And you are? Joe Campbell. Joe Campbell. The it's a pleasure. Joe Campbell. Yeah, no, it's Joe great, Campbell. great to meet you, man. Nice to meet you. Pleasure. Thanks real pleasure. Me. Absolute real pleasure. I don't know if you really understand how much of a big star you are over here because of I the don't. wire. Um, feed, already, we, feed my ego. We, I don't know yet. We discussed off camera that you ain't around. <laughs> long enough, you know, yes. for us to really kind of, you know, give you that impression. But before we go into any mm. of that, let's talk about Callous Hands um, and in particular your role as Bird. Yes, uh, you know, it was interesting after, you know, after my career coming up, a lot of supporting, you know, the idea of me playing a lead character was kind of uh, interesting. And I was, you know, coming up in the States, you get put in a box. I'm the world's greatest junkie right now. And, right. you know, I, I, don't get a, I don't get that many opportunities to do, to be a lead. Mm. So when Jesse came to me and said, the director, I want you to play lead in this movie, Callous Hands, a true story about my life. I was very, you know, I was abused. As a little kid, I thought it was, you know, it took incredible courage for any person to put their true life on the big screen to be judged. Mm. And that was the second thing that made me go, you know what, I'm going to tell a story. I'm down with you. And then the third thing, you know, it's about, a, you know, it's a family movie about an abused uh, relationship and about parenting, how hard it is to be a parent. You know, I have a kid, 15-year-old daughter, and, and the idea of being motivating or being uh, supportive of your child is always a thin line. You never know when it's when you're going too far. Mm -hmm. And I find it interesting. We look at Michael Jackson's parents, or Serena Williams, or Tiger Woods. You know, they when you hear how they raise their kids, mm -hmm. because of they're successful, it looks like oh, that's a great job. Mm -hmm. When you hear about Michael Jackson, you go oh, he went too far. Mm -hmm. He pushed too much. And I find that it's a thin line of knowing when you've overstepped your boundaries as a parent to push your children to uh, succeed. And I thought that was a very inter interesting uh, theme to tackle. Yeah. And that's what this uh, movie, that's the theme line yeah. th uh, throughout the movie is how hard, when, 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 has, when have you gone too far in trying to motivate a young, a young person? The moment of truth right here, man. That's what it's all about. This is the moment. Let's show what you made of. Come on, Josh! Come on, Josh, you can do it! <laughs> you gotta be able to deliver when the game is on the line. And everyone is watching. Bro, do you have any idea when you'll be able to start contributing again? I got a strong feeling that next week, next week will be my week. Baseball, big sport in America. Big sport, yeah. Not yeah. so big outside of America. So how does this story, which is anchored with the baseball, uh, you know, dream, uh, route to tip dream, how is it, how is it going to resonate with an audience that's a bit more global? Well, I think it, the one thing that's, that's uh, global in all, on all sports is the dream in you know, achieving your dream and being successful. And also, you know, again, with a young kid, we all look at, you know, universally, we all want our kids to succeed. Yeah. We all want our kids to have the opportunity to achieve their dream. And it doesn't really matter the sport, it's the opportunity and the drive that uh, I think everybody can relate to when they see the movie. It so happens to be baseball, which is, you know, an American sport. But it could be cricket, it could mm. be soccer. Mm. It's the idea is you gotta get out there, you gotta practice, you mm. gotta want it, you gotta work for it. And I think that's the uh, the universal appeal that the movie will have. What was it like working alongside Daisy Haggard, uh, Hans Howe, Sean Mahoney, uh, sorry, Sean McConaughey. Yeah, yeah And yeah. Uh, in particular, Lu uh, Lucas, Oreo Lucas. What Lu was that like? I mean, you know, when you work with kids, there's a certain honesty mm. that you, you can't you can't fake. And, you know, they always say in the acting world, they always say, you know, don't work with kids or don't work with animals because they'll steal the scene. Mm -hmm. Because they don't, they, they're not about, most of the time they're not about the craft, they're about the honesty. Mm -hmm. You know, you put a kid in a box and say, that's a, a car. That kid would act like it's a car without even having to work at it. So Lucas was very real, he was very honest, and he kept me on my toes. Daisy Haggard, I mean, I didn't know of her. Uh, and I started looking at them, and when they cast her, I went online and saw her do a lot of comedy. Mm. And she's a funny chick. Mm. And, and, and there was a certain energy that she has that I thought would be very unique. For I never worked with a, a comedian, and she was a you know she was a funny chick. And you know you know most comedians they have a dark side. Yeah. When you when you when you're paid to be funny, when the camera's off, you don't feel like being funny no more. And <laughs> you're like yo, <laughs> enough of the laughter. I got some pain. And she was able to bring that to the to the screen. That was very unique yeah. and uh you know the rest of the, the rest of the cast 
it's hard for me to say how you know what what it was like to work with them because again it was my first lead mm. so I was all in I was I was burned yeah, for imagine. a large part of the movie so I didn't really like anybody mm. you know it was me it was really me Luca and uh, Daisy that was the family unit that's who I you know hung around with mm. that was in my brain and everybody else you know they were the character mm. and we didn't really you know until once we wrapped and everything was done mm. then we you know hung out and got to know each other on a, a more person to person uh, basis better than that better than this i need something that's better than the weed and the lick can't be posted you looking for the family special tonight i cannot have drugs in my house when the last time you been the it's none of your business as you said the story was quite personal to jesse yeah um there were some dark moments in there in the yeah. film as well um was it easy to connect with the story? I mean, you've touched on that already, but was it easy? Did everyone just get it? Or were there moments where it was difficult to, to convey exactly what Jesse was trying to get across? It was difficult. Mm. It was difficult because, you know, you have, you have certain responsibilities as a filmmaker. Mm. And you want to tell a story. But you also want to, you know, entertain the audience. Yeah. And you also want to give the audience a full spectrum of what's happening. And when it's personal to, you know, it was personal to Jesse, he can only see one side of it he can only you know and then you got to say how much do you want to devolve how yeah. much do you want your mom mm. it's, it's, you know she's gonna see mm. this movie mm. you're telling her story too about her being abused and you know we had to really uh tread lightly on 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 what we wanted to express and that made that made it probably the most difficult experience i've had yeah. because again it was you know you, you felt responsible to the the audience to the, to the director and to yourself on getting it right and it's dark man you know you, you never want to see a kid be abused mm. you know you never want to see a woman being abused so to you know live that kind of character it's not fun how was it finding the balance in terms of the darkness and and telling the story did you find it was quite complimentary or was there, was there times where it kind of go out of sync um I, I, I don't know. I, mm. A little bit of both, mm. and, that, and that's mm. when you trust your director. Yeah. That's when you trust the, you know, the, the DP and everybody else to go. That's too far, or let's lighten it up. Because once you're in, you're in, and I, 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 I kind of black out and go into, you know, but as long as everybody trusts each other, once you say action, we go. Now, if there's some levity, if there's some uh, humor, if there's some soft side, of course, mm. it's a relationship. So there's no way in hell a woman or or there's no way in hell you could build that kind of uh, a relationship. If it's all abusive, you know there, there has to be a reason why she stays. There has to be a reason why the young boy looks up to Bird in his own way because it all comes from a, a, a an skewed good place. He he has a good heart. He means well, but when it doesn't go his way, guess guess. What do you want? Ten thousand dollars. I have a proposition for you. I want you to have a bar mitzvah because you're my one and only grandson. You're my flesh and blood. And that's Jewish blood running through your veins. Six months to learn to read Hebrew. Oh boy. I want you to succeed. I want you to be the best damn baseball player that ever lived. He can hit a baseball 400 feet. Look, there's more He's to only life. 12. There's more to life than baseball. Not for him, there ain't. It's a nice house. I want one. Bet I'm the only rabbi in the U.S. of A who can pitch a baseball over eight miles an hour, huh? I don't know Jewish guys play ball. Y'all are really taking this Hebrew stuff seriously, ain't you? What, is that a threat? That's a warning. He stopped pushing Josh so hard. Let's go! Come on, come on. Come on, baby! Come on! Josh, concentrate! See the ball in! Come here, come here, come here. Give me six laps. Hey, don't talk to him like that. You know me? Do I know you? Hey, hey shut up, kid. What, are you being cool now? I will knock you out. You tell us about some of the more, you know, some of the scenes you, you really like shooting, you really enjoyed shooting. There must there looks like some, point, some points in there you were having some some fun. I mean, I know I mean, you're explaining that you were in as the character, yeah. so... It, I mean, it's, it's... Well, you know what? As It was fun to be making out with Daisy. I mean, this is my first love scene. <laughs> this is my first scene where I, Bubbles didn't make out with nobody. <laughs> he just got high. So it was good to, you know... Anytime I got to make out with Daisy yeah. and, and just uh, be affectionate, yeah. that, that was fun. And, you know, for me and for Jesse, it was very therapeutic. You know, I have a daughter. And when I would do scenes with, 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 uh, with Luca, who played my uh, stepson, Watching him on the baseball field and rooting for him and trying to get him to, you know, man up and, and, and hit the ball, it felt good. It felt like, again, he had a good, he was coming from a good heart. And, and, and you always, 
you always feel good when you're cheering somebody on and you want to you want them to succeed. But when he fucked up, then all of a sudden Bird reacted in a way that I guess was deemed inappropriate. You think I'm hard on you, man? I love you, man. I wish I would have had it me when I was you. You know where my boy. It's just you and me out here. I ain't nobody. Don't worry about them. Just bless this. They're callous tomorrow.